Hello, everybody, and welcome to Strength Hammer, episode 57. A uh, little bit of a different show tonight. Um, Neil is a little MIA, as you can tell, because uh, he's got an uh, anniversary with his wife, and that's more important than our little podcast. Uh, and that's not a joke. That's happy anniversary, you too. Um, so instead of like a full intro here, what we normally do, I'll just kind of cut to the chase. So tonight on the show, we have a interview with the one and only Ben Mudge. Um, uh, definitely a good Instagram presence. He's also on Twitter as well. And uh, uh, Ben is, I developed a friendship with Ben over the past couple of years here now um, through the shared interest of fitness and Warhammer. Uh, I guess long story short, I don't want to disclose too much of the interview itself, but I want to have Ben on because he's starting to do his own uh uh, Warhammer content specifically called more Warhammer. So links will be down below in the description of YouTube as well as the uh, uh, podcast as well. So wherever you're watching or listening to this, uh, feel free to check it out. Give them a like and subscribe. Um, also, if you are a Spotify specific listener, uh, a long time ago, I said I was going to get video up on the um, Spotify channel and I did I was having it uploaded, but it wasn't processing so I had to re-upload it all as just audio So I'm not sure why Spotify video won't work, but the only place you're gonna find video right now is on the YouTube So please come over there like subscribe Comment really appreciate that trying to help us grow um, So yeah, uh, uh, episode 57. I hope you enjoy this uh, interview with Ben much. He's a he's a great person It was a fun little chat. We'll definitely have him back on again, but um yeah, in, enjoy the uh, enjoy the enjoy the chat and a uh, little last bit of housekeeping right now. Uh, next week, normal recording, uh, the last weekend of May into the first week <laughs> of June. Um, I'll be at the U.S. Open Kansas City as one of the TOs, as is my job with Games Workshop. Um, so if you're there, look forward to hanging out with you there. But there won't be a podcast uh, next week, so we'll be missing a week. And also the uh, blog, if you follow my blog at strengthnever.net, will be a little bit delayed. Um, so yeah, uh, you might not hear from us for a little bit, but definitely follow uh, myself on Instagram and Twitter at strengthhammer underscore. And you can see what I'm getting on uh, while I'm there. And like I said, I'm going to try and do a travel vlog, all that fun stuff that I do whenever I do these events. Should be a good time. But yes, enjoy the chat with Ben Mudge. Uh, have a great time, everybody. Happy hobbying and stay Stormcast strong. Enjoy episode 57. All right, everybody. We are here with the one, the only, the most handsome, Ben Much. How you doing? Oh, thank you very much for that. I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm very excited as we were just rambling off the uh, the recording. This is the first time we've talked face-to-face -face despite our constant interactions we've had on Instagram and, and on other media socially posting. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. weird. I feel like I know you, but I haven't... That, that's, that's the thing. It feels like, you know, a lot of people go, oh, it's it's strange to finally meet you. And I'm like, but you, you have met me? You're just seeing me for the first time in, in person? It's it's a... Social media is a, such a strange thing in that regard. Like, I there's people who like yourself who i feel like i would know and if i walk past you in the street would be like hey yeah but no I, it's like yeah we're, it's it's we're, simple. we're it's already simple. we're already good friends and it's it's yeah it, it'll be that same feeling whenever we do get a chance to meet in person at some place in some point in the future no joke that's one of the like the many goals i have with starting you know the channel and stuff mm -hmm. i was like hopefully it brings up opportunities that i can then go and meet you and alex as well yeah, it, me and Alex, we, we were tempted because you came over recently to uh, Philadelphia, the States, for something. And I that's, did. that's a six and a half hour drive for us. We were very tempted, but we're like, no, he's got things to do. It would be weird just to show up. And it's like, if you were just hanging, it would been like, maybe. <laughs> but like, you, you know, you were there for a, a very important reason. Oh, dude, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't interrupt. That would have been awesome. That would have been awesome. But yeah, it was a, man, that was a packed trip. Like, that was two weeks, but it felt like a month because 
we did so much in such a short period of time, but we also got enough time to kind of decompress yeah. in between those big things. So it felt like we were there for like a month. Nothing like wrong it was with that, but... Not at all. It was brilliant. It's like, it, it's the ideal, you know, the only other way of stretching out time like that is doing a plank. And I didn't want to do it. <laughs> time stops when you plank. Yeah. I actually considered that when I was walking on the beach in Florida. I was like, I might just drop down and do a plank just to feel like I'm here for the rest of my entire life. <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm curious, in Florida, were you on the Gulf Coast or the ocean? We were on the... Ooh, that's a good question. I think we were on the... We were in the East Coast, so that's the Gulf, right? Yeah, it's the Gulf. Yeah, it's the calmer waters. Mm. Okay. Yeah, very, very blue, very warm. Yeah, we were, we were in West Palm Beach. Um, oh, I love which West is... Palm. Yeah, I've... I, oh, I've... Yeah, I've been to West Palm. There's a nice street party there every Thursday. It's That's it's, it's a great place. <laughs> It's, yeah, well, we we have family. Well, we have not family. Well, they feel like family friends. Now we have friends now there who um, they they they're all in that area, and then the person who we were staying with there, she said to us like, yeah, she lives in like a gated community in West Palm. She's like, if you ever fancy, you know, coming back over, just let me know. I'll, I'll my house will be free to you. And I was like, oh, <laughs> is this a, is this is that a real was that a real offer? And she said like six more times after. I was like, I think this is a legit offer. So. There's a good chance I'll be able to get back there again. Um, it's first time in Philly as well. Never been to Philly. Well, a layover. Yeah, a well, layover. A, as a as a Pittsburgh native, uh, and they're the sister side of our state. We hate them. So, <laughs> I've been there. Though I'm I'm forced to hate them. That's just the nature of things. So, <laughs> are, you, are you a Steelers fan then? I have to be. Um, there's the terrible That's tower right there behind me. You can see it's kind That's, of behind some yeah, more hammer I was, models. I was picking out the yellow. I was like, that looks like it could be the terrible tile. It is the terrible tile, isn't yep, it? Terrible tile. Yep. I, I got yeah. you know, Steelers, Pirates, Penguins. I'm, I'm all that. <laughs> Can you see? Uh, is that Baltimore? Baltimore? Falcons? Falcons? Falcons. Yeah. That's good. Nothing wrong with Atlanta. No, no it's uh, well, the reason why I support them kind of is because I supported them whenever Vic used to play for them. Like oh, whenever yeah. he, like, like yeah. back in the day, how yeah. long I've been a Falcons fan for. And then obviously all that stuff came out about him, and I was like, "Huh, yeah." Oops. And then he went to Philadelphia, so you yeah, know, that's you fine. But well, I guess we should um, say too, um, real quick, because I know we're talking about your recent trips to America. But you know, where are yeah. you from? Let's let's uh, you know, obviously yes, sorry, people might be hearing like a, a nice, lovely accent on you, so they're like, mm, "He's not from America, possibly." No, I'm no, I'm not. But thanks for the lovely accent. It's um, it's grown in Northern Ireland. I'm from. Belfast, Northern Ireland. Um, my name's Ben Mudge. Just may as well get that out there. I am 33 years old. I have lived here my entire life. I've been very, very fortunate to travel to a lot of places in the world. Um, I've been a coach for 12 years, an online coach for the last 10. Um, yeah. And I have been a Warhammer fan since I was 10 years old. So it's the only thing that I did. It's the gym for me, the thing I've done the most consistently, mm -hmm. you know, other than sleep and eat. It's one of the things that I have done the most consistently for, you know, this amount of time. Um, but yeah, I'm now just getting, it's over the last couple of years, I've really gotten back into it and oh, it's such a good hobby. It is. It's like the best, it's the best hobby, isn't it? It, it, it's, it's, it does, since both of you and I do fitness, like I found that it's such a perfect foil to the fitness. Like, you know, not always aggressive, but like you're in the gym, you're moving heavy things, you're, you're breaking your body down, but then this is such a meditative state. When you're just yes. lobbying, whether you're talking, you know, it's great social always, but like, I, you know, I was building some, uh, I want to say models and miniatures at the same word. Sorry. <laughs> I was building some before we got on here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I get to like a flow state and like my mind just relaxes. I feel all my muscles just tension leave. Food. Yes. Yes. That is exactly why I enjoy it so much, especially not this age. Obviously when you're a kid, like, I'm, you know, 10 years old, you're not thinking about that stuff. You're just like, yeah, I'm going to build these things and I'm going to smack them together. And, but like, well gently um but no it's it, it really is like a form of not therapy but it, it has the kind of same you know overlap from you know you're going into the gym to train the body and train to a certain extent the mind whereas this is then the mind's at the forefront and the body's kind of just there to assist um you know it's the kind of like polar opposites of each other but they balance each other out like yin and yang mm -hmm. so nicely um but yeah i mean Oh yeah, you're talking about that flow state, like painting, the process of painting, the process of building the models, building lists, you know, all those things, even making my board that I made, you know, that that was, mm -hmm. was so therapeutic. Um, and a lot of that does come from the same 
kind of dopamine route that that uh you know lifting weights has you mm -hmm. you put in this effort and then this this thing happens but with training it's obviously a lot longer of a delayed you know, gratification type thing yeah massively, massively yeah. whereas this is kind of like it's it's the same but it's scaled down right <laughs> literally <laughs> literally yep, yep um so there's definitely that overlap that i think you know i've definitely noticed um there's just that so many and even just speaking to clients who have an interest in warhammer there's so many little references i can make to this that i just i just love i love it whenever i can make a reference like i want you rolling <laughs> 12. i want you rolling 12s when you're going out for a run you know you're, you're yeah. gonna make a chart like you know i i, I yeah it's just I, it's, it, it's amazing it's it's phenomenal and it's it's fun to see you know i mean there's the ebb and flow um i, I mean i've yeah. told my story on here before my my story wasn't really ebb and flow it kind of just kept ramping up and has never stopped but i also yeah. found it after college or you know university whatever whatever you might call it around the world mm -hmm. um so i never had that phase where i was into it as a kid and then you know you have to be the young cool kid and go to parties and meet girls and all that stuff and then, then you came back to it i just kind of ramped up and I was married too, so my wife was stuck with me regardless. <laughs> but, Smart. but Smart. Uh, how was how was your journey been? I mean, take us back to like you know your first experience yeah. and 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 up to now. So I I think that the first time I was exposed to Warhammer was seeing it whenever we were in Belfast. There was a, a shop in Belfast, and we'd always walk past, and I was going to be like, oh whoa, because my dad was into Airfix models. So I had from like as, as young as I can remember, he had you know Lancaster bombers and Spitfire jets hanging from the ceiling with, oh, with wow. fishing wire. That's awesome. You know, in my room, yeah, it was amazing. Like I remember so specifically where you know him putting those up, and I was like, that's so cool. And then um, we went to like a model village when we were in England visiting my family, and just found that fascinating. Like I, like dioramas still fascinate me. And my dad and I made a little diorama, with, like tanks and everything, and that's kind of where it started. And then. I, I think it was when the first Lord of the Rings came out, the uh, the magazines that they had where you get like Moria Goblins in the first episode and then, um, oh, what was it after that? I think it was the Riders of Rohan maybe? or No, that was yeah, the was second. It was the Last Alliance. Yeah. The Last Alliance. Yeah, Elves, yeah. Elves, yeah. Elves and Gondorians. Um, or Numenorian, sorry. And um, my, my cousin and I got those magazines. Uh, and then that kind of where it started. I did have a couple of actual Warhammer models. I used to go and just buy whatever, like dwarves, elves, whatever was cool. Like, yeah, especially, it's just especially like when they were, whatever. the blister packs. Like I missed those. Like those really cheap. You remember that pricing? Yeah. Oh yeah. And it was like A for this amount, and then you could be like, oh, I've got this much money. What ones could I afford? And uh, yeah, that, that. Yeah. Then you find that awesome. hero, and you're like, oh, I need to, I need to get this. This is like the yeah, hero. For this my is the one I need. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like twelve pounds. That was like probably one of the most. I think sixteen pounds, which would have been like twenty bucks, maybe yeah, twenty twenty four or something like that. That was like the that was the most that it went to, and I was like, oh, that's way too much for me. I can't afford that. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, now look at all this like over that. here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, growing up, uh, I think I I still remember so vividly being in the Warhammer store with my my, my younger cousin and all the popular girls from school walking past the front door, and me just being like. Uh, don't see me As don't do. don't notice do. me <laughs> yeah because you know it's it's it's, a, it's i think it's maybe changed now but i don't know i'm a 33 year old man i don't know what 10 year olds are thinking <laughs> don't really have an interest in that either but um fortnite and tiktok right is that <laughs> yeah probably probably something not as fun as warhammer but yeah so you grew up i mean i definitely grew up think feeling like i had to not hide it that sounds like really weird but just it wasn't something i'd be very forthcoming with if someone asked me about it um I still played it with my cousin, you know, my cousin, it was the thing that me and my cousin used to do like all the time. It was so much fun that again, we got into the Lord of the Rings side of it. And then I put it down for a long time. And then one of my friends had a breakup with his girlfriend. And I was like, I know how to, I got you. I know. How to yeah, I don't fix that. <laughs> so we went, I think we went and got the Age of Sigmar or is it the Orcs? The, it was the Orcs versus Space Marine box set. Where they had the choppers and you had the mega knobs and uh, yeah, yeah that's, it, that's it was either cool. that one, it was either that one or it no, it was that one. Mm -hmm. It definitely was that one because then we got the Age of Sigmar one after where it was Corn versus Stormcat, like the very, the first, very first one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with like the Korgrath and stuff. Uh, that was when he broke up with another girlfriend. So <laughs> back in the Warhammer, a pattern, a pattern was starting to emerge, and then and then. <laughs> And then it was the Death Guard versus uh, Space Marines. 
when he broke up with another girlfriend. So I was oh, like, just, just keep, just, just keep putting yourself out there. I'll be, I'll be there to pick you up, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and pick up the models. <laughs> being, um, being a good friend and enjoying the hobby along the way. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, broken up with another girlfriend. Well, time we go to Belfast. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean that was you know the last. I was like seven, eight years ago. Uh, but it's only recently that I really, I kind of just developed that I don't care. Like, I don't care what other people think of me. I don't care what, if something gives me this much joy, I'm just going to do it. I don't care. Like, yeah. it, and then the response you get as well when you start, you know, because people have an opinion on me, which is obviously, you know, everyone has an opinion on anyone, but on everyone, sorry. But I think people's opinion of me because my social media is just, I'm just the dude who trains and that's all I do. And I was like, nah, like training is such a, it's obviously my job. Right. But it's such a small part of me that I consider not one of the most interesting things in my opinion. That's just, that's just my opinion. I just don't think fitness is something that's super, you know, interesting. Whenever I was talking to someone, it's probably one of the last things I'd talk about. Mm -hmm. I talk about Warhammer. I talk about movies. I would talk about so many other things that yeah. fitness. I'm just like, that's kind of, it's kind of sad that that's what I'm known for. So then I just decided, you know what? I'm just going to show myself painting. And yeah. I think it was my mega organ. I think I posted my mega organ, the one of the first stories. And I remember still. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the uh, Kraken Eater. Mm -hmm. And I still remember being like, oh, like, who's going to see that? And, you know, who's like, and then I was like, actually, when I think about it, there's no one on my Instagram that I really care if they think, oh, I think lesser of him because he's collecting more. And if they are, jog on. Yeah, like, you're going to keep doing it. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to, your opinion is not going to stop me from enjoying this at all. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep doing it. And, um, yeah, then that kind of brings me up to today. One of my friends from football, I remember, again, I paused for a while because my friend then didn't have a girlfriend for a while. So I couldn't bring up anybody, so couldn't play. Yeah, so it's just a <laughs> cycle. But I was at American football, and um, one of the plays that got called out was like Paladin or something like that. And it, basically, the, the play caller was naming all stuff after D&D. &D. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, oh, cool. I appreciate the fact that he's saying Hobbit, and one of the guys turned around to me is like, are you a nerd? And I was like, you're damn right, I'm a nerd. <laughs> He's like, oh. And he was like, like, how much of a nerd? And I was like, take a knee. I'm going to tell you all about the nerdy <laughs> things that I love. And then we started talking. We got onto the, the you know, I said to him, like, I, I collect Warhammer. And he's like, oh, I've always wanted to try that. And I was like, cool, why don't you come up? You can play a game with me. I've got plenty of models, as most hobbyists say. Um, probably too many. Of course. I was like, you can try it. And, yeah, like, if you if you have too few models, are you really... Do you really collect Warhammer? <laughs> no. Nah. Um, so yeah, he came up, started playing. He really enjoyed it. He then bought one of the armies that I had off me, which I was like, cool, that allows him to have an army like that. It was already painted up. And um, yeah, that's kind of when I started getting really back into it. Cause I was like, this is so much fun. This is an, a really cool way of spending time with the people I want to spend time with. Mm -hmm. And as a guy, I think it's so important to have that social circle of male friends. Like, yes, there's a big... I, again, this is just my opinion, so, you know, take it or leave it, but there's such an emphasis on the lone wolf, you know, man, like the, the oh, man who's yeah. by himself, the stoic, like, I'm by myself, like... You, you can that, only be by yourself by the strength you build off others along the way. Love yeah. that. Yeah, love it's... that. Like that, and that. It's not how we, as a species, should be. We men are supposed to hang around with each other, we're supposed to spend time, we're supposed to have a common objective, and that's kind of what Warhammer gave me. I've always had a fantastic group of friends, but you find that as you get older, there's less and less reasons for you to hang out because you don't play video games anymore as much as you did back then, obviously, because you have less free time. And unless you drink, which I don't, none of my friends are massive drinkers. They they have the odd occasional drink, and I have the odd drink, but it, it's you, not you, something... You're not going out to the bar. That's not the goal. No, nah, no pubs or bars. Like it, It's yeah. um, it's very anti-Northern Irish and, and Irish. Um, <laughs> everyone's like, well, yeah, are we really best. Irish? And I'm like, well... I'm half English, so no, not really. But they don't have a fantastic relationship with drinking culture either. But anyway, um, <laughs> no. the yeah, so it gave us just something to do. It was a it was a creative side of my mind that I've had you know for a long time and allowed me to really lean into that. It was something that just I enjoyed so much. So once my friend got into it, then I just started to build and kind build. of snowball. What, what, yeah, I really, I what I really like too, like what you talk about, is you reached the point where you just said, you know screw it i i'm a nerd and i like this i mm -hmm. i was the nerdy like un, i was one of the nerdy unpopular kids all through because like when i was 10 i was i fell in love with pokemon i was all about pokemon i didn't care um 
then you know after that i get into like heck yeah <laughs> also, <laughs> I I love also it. Shiny, shiny charizard right up there oh my goodness oh Dude, like yeah gorgeous. i mean, oh, I mean yeah I just as you said <laughs> yeah pokemon, your own pokemon, but... we're, we're finding new ben mudge uh tech here everybody live oh that's that's gorgeous oh my goodness yeah. There's a slight mark on the on the card, but I mean, who cares? It, mean, you have it. That's amazing. And there's have all these old ones. Like, <laughs> my mine are literally mine are literally over there. Like, I could go get them. Yeah, I have that one too from the movie. Hell yeah! Yep, gotta go see that movie. That oh, is so yeah. sick. Yeah. <laughs> so put one. Yeah, I was into that. Yeah. Yeah, but like, I I went through and I I never. I never really had that shame because I also got lucky with a, a group of friends, both male and female, early on that were also nerdy. So, like, I just got to stay nerdy. Like, you walk oh, into my house, you can tell I'm a nerd right away. Like, here's my old cosplay stuff, like, weapons on the wall. Here's, you know, like, posters of, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just... Yeah, but Stormbreaker, I, yeah. But I, I get it. I, I get that people go through phases of their life where they want to not be forthwith want to hold that in and that makes sense but mm -hmm. i'm also i love seeing people just be who they are and be who they want to be if you're not hurting anybody just be who you are and people will appreciate that tenfold more yeah and the thing is there's only one version of you in the world and we only have so much so time not, if, only so much like, time yeah and you know if you're trying to if you're trying to be not you you're by default being someone else and yeah. you'll always be second best you yep. always be the second best. If you're trying to replicate someone else's life, you'll always be the second best version of that person because they're that person. Right. So and, you just got to lean to what you love. And, and and that said, like too, like you mentioned, like your your group of guy friends, uh, your circle that you game with, which is like I, I have that too every week. We every Wednesday every week, um, we we call it the barn because it's in a barn because the guy that owns it has horses for polos down below is the stables and up up above is just a nice redone barn. So we call it the barn. I think um, I've seen that on your stories, actually. Oh, you'll get over Very here. You'll 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 get to go there one. <laughs> we just gotta get you over here, and we'll feed and house you for as long as you're here. Um, That's good. But it is such a remarkable thing to have that um, support structure as a guy. Yeah, it is. It's it, it's so important for your mental health. Like, I mean, guys, mental. I mean, we, you know, you you were there. We did that mental health uh, twenty four hour oh, live yeah. stream. Talk about that, because that that was a remarkable yeah. thing. Like just that was yeah that was an idea that you know my my old business partner Josh and I just were like right we want to do something for charity and I was like well what can we do for twenty four hours I thought I I just was like right well we could do VR for twenty four hours we could do which in hindsight so glad I didn't do that but <laughs> I was like we could just you know he he I got him into Warhammer and he still considered himself a, a very much a newbie and he he kind of dabbles but I was like well why don't we just sit down chat do a 20 you know we can actually still have conversations with people we're not putting ourselves through this grueling thing it's not that's not what it's about mm -hmm. it's like dudes being dudes yeah. that's what we kept calling them. just guys being guys and dudes being dudes and <laughs> it's just us sitting in the room for 24 hours chatting painting talking about you know the state of men's mental health um and we raised like again massive thanks to you as well for that you were a big big part of that and making that so oh, much I fun so yeah, I I just saw the end goal. I'm like, you guys were so close, and I, I could see like you were trying. Dude, you, like the energy was low. I'm like, I got money here. <laughs> like just yeah. Was, yeah to I, watch you guys still, pop off was was well worth every dollar spent, especially because it went to you know charity after it, that. Yeah, I mean, I think we raised over two thousand pounds. So what's yeah. like nearly nearly three? Well, but probably about two and a half thousand dollars for yeah. all the American listeners. Um. My, I think it might have actually been more than that because I think we initially were. I was like, look, if we get five hundred pounds, I'd be, I'd be over the moon. Mm -hmm. Any, anything helps. Like absolutely anything helps. But the fact that you know, thanks to people like yourself, very generous people like yourself, um, you know, we were able to raise a, a good bit of money for for such an important thing. And you know, going back to what I was saying, you know, it's so important for men to have that community mm -hmm. where you can just be yourself and just and just hang out with guys and chat and you know. The, or even you're not there being... to solve problems. It's just talking and being like, "Oh, okay, you're feeling like that too," and it's something very therapeutic about that. Um, yeah, but even just being, because I, I remember some of the parts where I have you guys on in background and I'm doing my hobby, and then I realized the whole stream would get quiet for a few minutes, and then someone like yourself, you're like, "Oh, we should we should talk. We're on stream," because you guys all got into it, and just the existence of being next to your friends 
doing all the things you love. That's all you needed for that moment. Exactly. And that's the nicest thing that I have this, um, it's a weird categorization I have because that's what humans love to do. We like putting things in boxes, but I have, <laughs> I have a categorization of there's mates and then there's friends. Yeah. The difference between that for me, mate is someone you go out and see, you know, outside and you'd chat to them and you'd be fine. Friends are like the people who you can spend 24 hours with. You can sit in silence and still be like, cool. There's no effort required at all. You can mm -hmm. just sit and be your exact self. You don't have to put on a face. You don't have to put on a front. You don't have to be this person you're not really wanting to be. That's the difference for me. And I'm just very fortunate. I have a lot of friends. Um, yeah. Really, really good friends as well, including yourself too. Because this, this is what we're doing. We're just, you know, we're just chatting. Just chatting. Uh, yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, and the best part too, I, I think you'll, you can probably relate to this too. I have uh, a circle of friends that I met through my wife. Um, and it's like, it's like a hodgepodge, but a few of them, they're Warhammer nerds and some aren't, but they know enough about Warhammer because they care about me to know like, Hey, how'd your tournament go? Or, Hey, what's going on with this? Like they know enough to care. And, it, and like, that's, that's how you can tell like what a friend is. If, if they care about something you're doing, even if they don't care a shit about it. <laughs> Yeah, That's I was a... wondering whether we could swear on this. By the way, I was oh, waiting absolutely. for you to do yeah, it. You go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, I was like, I was like, I can, I can do it. But no, you, yeah, you, no, you're free. You're free. It's, it's. I said I, I don't do this podcast because I'm uh, trying to make a living or make money. I do it because it allows me to talk about Warhammer with with my good friend Neil. And now, uh, you know, have people like you on have conversations uh, with oh, multiple yeah. folks. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've. By the way, everyone out there, if you're listening, I have plans i've actually had some people cool people reach out like hey i wouldn't mind jump on your podcast with you i'm like i haven't really bugged people because i'm not promoting this podcast too much so you know like what you should be <laughs> you should be i i, I mean, should be it's just, i'm like just this. lazy <laughs> well, put it, yeah put it like this instead of thinking you're promoting the podcast just thinking you're opening up the door to potentially meet someone like like me and another friend that's a good idea that, no that's, that's a good way to put it yeah. Yeah, because you're you're doing yourself and the person that you could potentially be speaking with a disservice by not pushing it out there. You could also find a lot of people who would take a lot of comfort, like people who are like me, who are on the verge of kind of, you know, thinking about doing something. Mm -hmm. If you push it out, you're you're doing them a disservice by not doing it. So instead of making a selfish like a selfish thing, like oh, I don't want to push it because I don't want to promote it. Think of it from a, a different perspective of. I would love for more people to hear this because it might help them. It might give them an idea. It might just spark one thing. And dude, you'd be amazed at the impact that just one podcast can have on someone. I, I've had the privilege of having messages like that. So that's just my opinion. I think you should again. You may, maybe okay. I'll I'll I'll, I'll consider ramping up because like now that you put it in that like I I I, I don't have like you, know, you have you have a very very large following because it's your business and it's your focus with the, with the fitness end. I've never really push that i just like being who i am and if you like it great if you don't but i have had those messages where people are like hey just seeing you do this is like really got me to like and even that's like damn i i, I was i felt lucky enough to be able to improve my wife's life let alone someone else saying i've improved her life in some small marginal way so that's a good thing i've never really treated this concept with that thought process so thank you i appreciate that no. conversation and again if you hadn't have asked me that that might not again so i i and just on that note yeah you you and alex have been a massive part of me just being like you know what screw it i'm just i'm just gonna do this yourself Stephen box yeah. dave as well from the wargaming like yeah. i i have some incredible people around me that just want to you know i can reach out to and I, yeah i'm i'm very fortunate very very fortunate so i appreciate it no it's well there's there's a lot of um that that fortunate part like uh, almost everyone I talk to in this hobby feels that on some level because it's so niche and I guess tight knit, even though it's so big and global. Yes. Like, that's yeah, what it is. yeah. Like, you know, like you just, you just list off some, some great folks. Um, and you know, I feel lucky, like, I mean, I've been able to travel this country and TO for this and I've been to the UK and been to these events and done this. And, and it's like, I feel like super blessed. And I was like, if this hobby didn't exist, I'd never would have had probably three quarters of life experiences I've had exactly which and that's what that's about which, which i could say yeah. too like kind of comes to the when you said earlier like the last thing you want to talk about is your fitness because that's yeah. that's probably your, your your personal fitness not necessarily your work your work end of it is maybe yeah. two hours a day like what you're eating get a sleep on time and your time in the gym and then yeah. like the other 22 hours if it's not sleeping is probably thinking about warhammer or you know 
It is. It is. That's exactly what's <laughs> about it. <laughs> but now, it's, especially with the, the the YouTube channel, like all I'm thinking about is like, and the greatest thing about this man is I'm not thinking of this as an end. It's exactly the approach I take with all my clients as well. Someone comes to me and wants to lose weight. I know I'm talking about fitness, but this is just this as a, as a story. Someone says, right, I want to I want to lose 30 pounds. And I'm like, cool. What are the processes that you're going to need to do? What are the habits you're going to need to adopt to get to that point? Because let's not focus on the outcome. Let's focus on the processes and the systems mm-hmm. that are going to get you to that outcome because that's what we're focusing on. And that's what I'm doing right now with this Warhammer channel. It took me so long to get that first video out. Okay. I filmed that first one. Uh, maybe... Uh, time's so hard to tell right now, but maybe like six to eight weeks ago. Okay. And because it wasn't the way I wanted it to be, there's so many things I would like to have changed. I just kept avoiding pulling the trigger. Mm-hmm. And it was actually Josh who kept messaging me, being like, "When's that video coming out?" <laughs> coming out? He yeah. says, "If you don't, if you don't release it in the next couple of days," I said to him, "I'm going to try and release on Friday." He's like, "If you don't release it, I'm going to, I'm going to call you out on social media." I was like, "Please do, yeah. like genuinely, please do, because that will push me." But I got it out anyway. Um, I didn't need to be blasted on social media. Um, but yeah, like my my enjoyment of it is very much coming from the process, not the outcome. Like right. doing it dream enough. outcome. Yeah, I would love it if this became something. Yeah, like I would. You know, my goal outcome would be being able to do it and make a living from that. That would be a dream come true to me. Mm-hmm. If I could, if I could do the thing that I love, and live a life i want to live from that <clears throat> amazing but i know that's way off that's like me saying the first time i step into a gym i'm going to be built like the way i am today this has taken me 17 years mm-hmm. of hard of training and consistency of tra- yeah. discipline and so, so that's that's it it's the consistency side of it so whenever i was like not sure about pulling the trigger on that i was like look you know what i'm not going to let perfection get in the way of progress yes i know i'm not going to be good at presenting or talking about stuff or the lighting or that I've done all the things I can, but, but I can't expect to get better if I don't do the damn thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's, well, like, you have to start, you have to, you know, that journey of a thousand yeah. miles first foot, you have to start. I, I, and I mean, heck like this is episode 57 of the strength hammer podcast. Um, the first 30 were just crap. <laughs> <laughs> like i didn't know we didn't know what we were doing i had five you know all my friends on and it's like okay then i realized at some point okay that's too much i need to restructure this and slim it down and, and it's like okay well then how can i do this and how should that's the topic it, like, flow and it's like you just it's learn even, those little bits yeah and that's that's the other thing like there's no failure i literally said this to one of my clients and i, I wrote it down because i was like i probably remember this but failure is failing to learn from your experiments, from your from the challenges you take on. Right. That's the only time I consider something a failure if you fail to learn anything from that, but you did. You learned from that experience, which you couldn't have done if you hadn't put yourself out there. That okay, I need to restructure things. And that's the entire approach I'm having with this channel. I'm just like, right, I'm gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple for people. Again, it's my entire approach to fitness. Keep it simple. Don't make it overcomplicated. Mm-hmm. You know, be a gateway, not a gatekeeper into this into this incredible world right and that's it like um, you know my first goal is get to 500 subscribers and i believe you're close aren't I you am, uh, i'm dude i'm i'm like 482 oh you're so close well uh real quick so we have to name it what is the name of the youtube channel because you have a couple videos up now and you're gonna yes. you're getting them out regularly so shooting an, yep shooting another one today uh more warhammer yep so yeah, literally just more Warhammer. And um, obviously be link, links in the descriptions and stuff to go right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the point of the channel really is to kind of give people a jumping off point because I very much felt like coming in, especially in the 40K, I, I did a, it just saved more for a while, so I knew a good bit about that. But what I found was like the entry point for Warhammer is super high. Right. Like you can't just go in. Like if you watch a tournament, you go, right, okay, I'm going to YouTube uh, Warhammer. Perfect example. My friends over at Mini Wargaming, you're first of all, you're met with like this, this, this faction versus this faction. And then it goes into the army list. And that's where a lot of people, in my opinion, get lost because they're like, this warlord is going to have this trait and he's going to have this relic and he's going to have this and this and this yeah. and he's going to be doing this. And I was like, where did you find that information? And it's not very obvious. So I thought, right, yeah. I want to have a nice entry point for people who are like me, brand new to it, who just 
want to know the basics and in the most simplistic way possible and that's perfectly timed with 10th edition coming out by the way like oh yeah you, you timed it being like yeah <laughs> oh dude, yeah like it was and the funny thing is is even i released that first video and one of the excuses i was giving myself was oh well this this edition is going to be over anyway soon but again just changing my perspective i was like well that gives me a reason to make another video where I go, okay, all that things that all that stuff I'd learned turns out it's not going to be useful. <laughs> I now have to restart and go fresh. So, you know, that that's the approach I'm taking. I'm not seeing anything as, you know, a failure. It's only a failure if I fail to learn from it. And I'm enjoying the process. I'm just enjoying the entire thing. Like even structuring videos. Like I wanted to be a director growing up. Oh, nice. Okay. That's what I wanted to do when I left school. I did four years of media. Four. I'm holding up three. <laughs> thumbs and fourth. It's like I'm missing a finger. I did four years of media studies um, and started getting jobs in the media industry. Like I worked on the first season of Game of Thrones, which everyone's like, oh, like <laughs> you worked in the first season. It was a pretty cool experience. It was right. a miserable experience, but I learned a lot from that and it put me on the path that I'm on today. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. But this is allowing me to put all the things I've learned over the last 12 years of building my own business learning how to create a community, learning how to, you know, even the structure of videos, all those things. And, you know, a lot of my time, if you, if you fly on the wall, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, mm -hmm. but I'm paying attention to little things because of the perspective I, I take from film. I'm like, oh, he, he makes a cut every three seconds or he does something every three seconds in that video. Oh, he also says, oh, here's a little hook for the end of the video. So oh, if you want to blah, 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 you want to find out about X, make sure you stay around to the end of the video. I was picking up all these little things, these little tricks that I see these big YouTubers doing. And now I'm getting to actually do it. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. It, it is. I, even like with some of the stuff that I do that's not the podcast. I, I've done a few things. I try to make it interesting. One of my YouTube like kind of like inspiration, and I look at all he does, is Juju Mufu. He's a, he's, a, he's a fitness guy, yeah. but he's just so fun and loving. Oh, yeah. um, but like that's what I want to do. I want it to be fun. And I want people to feel like they're along the journey with me and like, but like that's, that's a style. So it's all about finding like the style you want, making it your own and adapting it yeah. as you go. Cause the other thing too, as you build your, your subscribers, your base and people comment and you react back and forth, you'll find out what they like and you'll adjust accordingly for it too. Sorry, we've got a little bit of yeah, delay here if, if anyone's watching the video. Yeah, so I, I got you there. As in, <laughs> I've, I've, as in, I've done many, many, many Zoom calls, so I've got good at being able to like fill in the blanks when someone's talking. But yeah. you're right, you do get to find, you know, you get to speak to people. And that was even the video that I'm making today. I'm going to try for full transparency, tried to film it last night, couldn't get over it. I was overthinking it. Right. And I literally went to film and I was like, nah, not doing it. So I literally got up and I wasn't that angry. I was a little bit frustrated, but I was like, right, cool. Don't worry about it. You tried. Come back tomorrow. Try again. You learned, you learned just a keep couple ways that, how but... not to make that video. That's what you did. Exactly. Um, and what I need and you, I need, I need a better structure. I, I can't just wing it. I need to have that structure. And yes, that's a bit more difficult for me to perform because I have to follow a script as such. But I'm like, well, it's either the video exists perfectly in my mind or it exists as it is in real life. And one of them is reality. The other is figment right. of your, your imagination. Well, one of them is actual tangible. So I was like, right, cool. I'll just film this tomorrow. But that actually, as you, as you were saying earlier, getting to know the people on the channel and the community, that's all, I mean, dude, I, I can't tell you how cool it is for me to log in and be like, this person's like commented on my video. And I'm <laughs> like, I don't know that person. You know, it's cool whenever you see people, you know, commenting like yourself or, mm -hmm. or any of my friends. But then when it's someone who is, you don't know, you're like, that's so cool. That person's coming like, the algorithm on my to channel. And... Somehow whatever you're yeah. doing matches what they're doing on some level. And, and you can find that connection. Yeah. And that was so cool. So this next video is, is based off one of the comments that I got in the previous video. So again, they're going to just so much. I, there's so many ideas that I have for content and that's, yeah, it's fueling me. Like, honestly, this is, um, it's the, the nicest thing I've had from, from people who have watched it is one, one of my, well, actually three, actually. So one of my best friends said like, you were born to do this. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is what you should be doing. And that's like, I've known this guy since we were four. Okay. So, he so that means you. a lot. He like, knows he, you. Yeah. He knows me to like, yeah, the deepest level. 
and for him to then say like yeah you're really you're really good at this you've got nice presence on the screen and i was like dude that means so much like that is so nice because again that's another thing typically guys don't they're not great at expressing emotions but my friends are group pretty pretty damn good at they don't get a choice with me i'm just an open book um are on the sleeve too yeah the guy mike oh yeah yeah the guy mike who's also part of the channel who was the one you, you met him on the live stream mm -hmm. yep. um he's the guy that made, made that live stream a hundred percent better so shout out to mike because <laughs> honestly he made that live stream just like double chef's kiss but he was so like we're what i was on discord actually the other day so this is the second time i've used it in like a year <laughs> and um he's like you know what's really nice and i was like what and he's like you can hear how happy you are oh, yeah. in your voice in like in the video and i was like oh cool um we even hear yeah so I, again there's a third example but i'll, I'll that's yeah so even here i can just see how happy you are talking you look very relaxed you look very like you're it's not a different version of you i'm seeing it's it's i'm seeing the full version of you now <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean like I you know, based, oh, based yeah. on your con other content i've seen you know what i mean like you are who you are like yeah. now you're just you're just laid back you're chill you're just you are just enjoying talking about warhammer and we're not even talking about warhammer we're talking about like <laughs> a side part portion of our hobby at this point and that's it that's what is so cool about warhammer there's so many aspects of this hobby that are so fulfilling and enriched. like and that's the thing i've said to people if you don't like painting you don't have to paint them nope. you know no one really cares i mean personally yeah. i don't like it when i'm playing gray models i don't that's just my thing i'm just like oh i want to be immersive but you know what i'm not going to be like get your get your models off the table like they're not like i don't care that much it's just a personal preference but you get more out of if it you don't like painting, yeah like if you don't like painting cool if you like painting awesome if you like battling you don't like but there's just so many and even that's just touching that's just touching kind of the surface then you got the lore yep. you've got the rules to it, you've got the terrain building you've got the like the stories you can create there's just so many layers to this that i would challenge anyone to not be able to find one thing they didn't enjoy about it actually honestly if you look at the the last podcast uh from last week that neil and i did we did hobby niches and it's talking mm -hmm. about those little things like drilling down like find the one thing that you really enjoy and you know maybe it's not the best thing you're best at but you enjoy it and then and how do those intersect and how's that venn diagram sort of work so you know like yeah. and, and you go through flows too like i used to be hyper competitive like i, I love being competitive with the last edition this now i'm like but i started out as like very narrative got competitive yeah. and now i'm just like i i can't i can't be asked to be competitive anymore i, I don't care i want to tell a story hang out with my friends so yeah. it's like you know you ebb and flow and you find where your 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 path is and just there's so much in this hobby like i didn't even think about the the whole terrain building aspect of it. like that yeah. skipped my mind like yeah absolutely even the and then even the painting of terrain is an entirely different skill set to painting models oh trust me i'm i'm aware <laughs> i do yeah. that, i do that for for the gw job i paint hundreds of the same pieces of terrain and it's it's a skill yeah. set <laughs> <laughs> it is it is and it's very very you can really be quite creative with it like yeah. the the board i've got you know i built i literally built that board and the coolest thing is like another part of this is taking something in your imagination and then having it like a tangible thing yeah right there in front of your eyes like you have this idea of how you want to paint the model and then you go and do it and it's there and you're like it's just that sense of accomplishment is is um is incredible um and the lasting accomplishment yeah. of it because my, my shop owner, the one thing he says about models, he's like, you don't need to feed them. They don't have to pay taxes. They just take up a nope. little bit of space. You can put them away for years and bring it back out and find that joy eventually if, if, if you need to. Exactly. And that's what I've done. You know, I still have like some of the first models that I ever painted. In fact, I have the very first model I ever painted, an orc. Nice. And even just comparing you, I'm going to do this to one of my videos at some point, like even comparing that orc to then sloppy bile piper who's probably one of the best painted models i have like mm -hmm. it's just i took really long time with that having those beside each other and being like oh wow you if you do something there's two things in my life that have taught me if you just keep showing up you will get better lifting weights warhammer yep they're the two things in my life that i'm like that taught me the equation of when you put in an effort over time this is the result yep and I mean, yeah, you can just, I mean, I'm, I'm still not incredible at painting. I'm not bad. I'm not going to like be like, I'm crap at it. I, compared to some people, yeah, but it's possible. I'm, I'm happy with it. I can see the progression. Um, but, also, but yeah, that, that 
the, the to tune into that with with how both of those are the more you put in and the consistency you progress naturally just by doing it but yeah the people who are the experts on a certain field so so if someone came into the gym and saw you like you know deadlifting 400 pounds you would and they said hey they could walk up to you and say hey how do i start getting as strong as you you and people think like oh you gotta be afraid of the masters like you would tell them exactly like this is what you need to do this is what i did same thing like you could go to any like the best painters in the miniature hobby and ask yeah. them how do i improve and they will tell you because because they want to stay they, they worry you at some point everyone starts yeah. at that level and they want to see everybody improve and bring everybody up so that the both of those aspects of our life too actually have the same type of thing Dude. the best people will teach you everything you want yep um i mean that's that's like <laughs> for me the reason why i'm so passionate about fitness and warhammer is because i want to share the excitement all the you know the passion the, all the little things that it's given me with other people and i've always said if i can give if i can give someone else one percent of how you know of the, how lifting weights has changed my life if i can give them like one percent of that i'm happy mm -hmm. like that's that that's incredible because it, changed, it genuinely has changed and saved my life in like more ways than i could ever even possibly even fathom I, it's, right. it's probably changed my life in ways that i'm not even aware of um and i just want to give that to as many people as possible because as i said we said this at the stop you get one you get one go around yep like, you get one go around you the last thing you want to do is look back and be like ah crap <laughs> <laughs> like, i should have done way more let's see what did i do with my life i was a miserable jerk on youtube and twitter great yep. great yep. you did it you did it have fun <laughs> like, you know, yeah like, go back and learn that lesson yeah but so, yeah that, that, i think that's you're so true like and a lot of people might um the last thing i wanted it was actually this is so cool because it was my friend michael who helps me he helped me learn warhammer quite a bit um michael fay he's one in the first video mm -hmm. uh he got me down to the gaming club and, and got me one of my first games and taught me a lot and he said to me, like, this is in relation to fitness, because he, he did a lot of fitness in his in his um like past. Uh, now he's a dad, so he's got a lot of stuff to handle. But mm -hmm. um he said he sees me as a gateway into fitness, not a gatekeeper. And I love that phrase. I was like, that's such a nice thing to be known as because I understand that if I saw someone in the gym who looked like me whenever I started, and I was a stick, dude. I was like, I was so small. Like people never believe me when I said that, but dude, I was struggling to get the six stone which is just to kind of work out what that is in pounds yeah stone stones one i don't keep in my head i can do kilograms no. and pounds easily but i can't do so there's there's 14 pounds in a stone okay okay so i was trying to get to 80 pounds oh okay in like and i remember that very clearly because with my condition with my cystic fibrosis hey there we go i've ticked off all this stuff <laughs> you got it <laughs> um Gaining weight was very difficult. Right. You know, it also it also has a massive effect on your digestion system, which means I wasn't gonna, you know, I wasn't gonna grow as tall as all of my other friends are. Um, it, it was it was tough. Um, but lifting weights showed me that okay, these people have told me I can't do this. I can't put on weight. I can't do you know, and then going and lifting weights and putting on muscle and getting to that size, I was like, oh wait, I can do this. You can do it. That's yeah, yeah and I want to share that with as many people as possible. Yeah, um, I, I have the and and. Actually, it's funny because I talked to Alex about this. A shout out to Alex Fithammer, um, because mm -hmm. he was also, like, I guess a hard gainer. Like he he needed to gain weight. I was the opposite. I was a fat kid. You went, yeah. So I went the opposite way. So seeing, you know, what like I always look at it when I see people who are overweight. It's like I I just want them to understand how much easier life is if you just start losing a little bit of weight. So like that's yeah. that's my mentality comes from that. So it's it's you know every time I see like the that honestly it's some of the most inspirational stuff for me when I see it on on social media. Whereas someone who's just like I'm tired of it. I'm going to the gym and you know there might be 380 pounds and they're lifting five pound weights, but they're in the gym. You fucking win, buddy. Like yeah, go. yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And that that is like you're so true. Like that that is the hardest part. I was even speaking to this you know this about um with my sister-in-law and my wife they were at a gym and they're now deciding to leave that gym because it's no longer serving the purpose that, that it that it was for them you know previously and i said to them like but you know you should be really proud of yourself because going to a gym it was a private gym so it was just you know you have eight or six six women in there as a woman mm -hmm. in the gym going to a gym by itself 
terrifying. And you're just, mm. you know, sheep in a field. You know, there's no one's really paying attention to you because honestly, not many people are paying Everyone's attention to themselves. You. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whereas they were going to a gym where there's only six people. Sometimes there's only two people. It depends on how busy the, the session was, but that's terrifying because suddenly there's a big spotlight on you. So you're right. Like just getting there, that's the win. But like you, the hardest part about going to the gym is getting to the gym. Well, even by comparison, going to your local game store, say you have your first army together, mm -hmm. going to that game store to try and play that game with people you don't know is also terrifying. Oh yeah. But if I, you I did. get in that door and you just, you get there and you start pulling out some models, people will come up to you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's just showing up and, and, and letting people know you're interested, whether it's like I said, just by pulling out your army or, or starting to lift the weights and, and people will like, Oh, we share a common thing immediately. Let's yeah. communicate and become friends. Let's play a game. Yeah. You just I, want to share it with as many people as possible. Yeah, and, and speaking of, of sharing too, one thing I want to touch on too, because I know you said you've played, you're, you're more 40k focused right now, obviously. Yes, right now, yes, yes. Which I mean, it ebbs and flows, and, and that, that's life. But exactly, yeah. What uh, what is your army of choice right now? Like, what's your obsession? Like, what's the thing you just like? If I could get ten thousand points of this on the table right now, I would. Votan. Votan. Okay. Votan. Yeah, I just I just love the fact that. I love their lore. I, I learned about their lore quite recently, and I was like, that's really cool. Like, what's, I love that story. What's your favorite aspect of the lore? Like, if you had to pick one piece to hook, like, your army's narrative Ooh. on, which piece? So I have, I I run the Amir conglomerate, who are, like, the rich boys. They're the ones who can afford the best technology, the best weapons. You know, they it's obviously changing now in 10th, but I love the fact that there's little subcultures of... Votan, it's not just they're all the same thing. Yeah. There's rich ones, there's ones that are more technologically advanced, there's ones that are just like they just want to fight. Like there's different personalities. But I think the thing that I like the most is the fact that they're all clones, but they're changed. Genetics fascinate me because of my mm. cystic fibrosis. It's sure. a genetic illness. Genetics have always been like a fascination for me. And the fact that they are all clones of each other, but they're varied differently enough that there's no like weirdness there. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and the fact that they work as a brotherhood because they all are technically part of the same gene codes. Right. Yeah. There's that unity. There's like a, there was a bit of the lore where it was like talking. I think it was um, it might have been Voldemort. He was doing it, and he was dis like describing how efficient they are in battle, and the fact that their technology is like slightly better than the Imperiums because they didn't have that decline of you know the what is the Men of Iron. Right they've still got all that technology so their technology is a little bit further ahead than the imperium i just think that's that's the cool part for for me um second to that it'd be the custodies which i know is a bit of a it's hard to it's hard like, not to like custodies they're the golden boys <laughs> no i know and then, then the more i find out about them i was like that's so cool like there's um there's just so much lore to them and there's a there's an actual specific sub faction within them that it was actually bricky who i listened to I listen to their Adeptus Ridiculous podcast all oh, the yeah, time. Oh, Adeptus Ridiculous is good. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's so funny. I just love DK's enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just the best. Um, but they were talking about the different factions, and there's one group of the custodians who are basically sent to protect people who are going to be important to the Imperium and the long term plan. So, like, you just have a random guardsman standing in a battle, shooting some Tar, some Orc, or some Eldar, and then suddenly it's boom, 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 five custodian nine foot gods are just like we're here to protect you <laughs> nothing no, no harm is going to come from you in our, our in our presence i was like brick even said this and he's like there's so much storytelling that you can do with just that right just that that description i'm like oh it's so cool so actually yeah. no that there was a it was a one of the people i can't remember their name they do web comics and they did a, mm -hmm. a web comic about that type of custodies it's like this little old lady walking up to get her rations and the guy behind the window He's like, oh, I'm sorry, we don't take those coupons anymore. And the custodies appears out of nowhere, slams his fist down, says, Margaret will get her rations. And he's just, the guy behind it's like, just crying. Like, oh, no. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, no, yeah. this demigod's come to get me. <laughs> um, yeah, and even just like the, you know, the, the lore of this custodies, because I just thought they were just golden space marines. And I was like, ah, wait, no, they're not. Yeah, they're not even close. Um, yeah, I just, so yeah, my, my main army, my Terry's chocolate oranges, that's what I call them. There you go. <laughs> My little, or my little orange boys. Um, and again, a shout out to um, my friend Adam. So he is 
Battle Art Brushworks on Instagram. He painted up my Hecaton. He painted up my Sagittor and my six uh, bikes as well. My hand care pioneers. Nice. pioneers. Hand care. The six bikers. He yeah. painted those up and they are just beautifully painted. Nice. Like he is incredible at what he does. Um, and that's a kind of cool thing as well. So this has given me a chance to connect with people who I thought I'd not lost contact with, but my friend Adam and Tristan, who I play games with, and Adam has said he's the painter. I played American football with them when I was 16, back in 2006. Yeah. We played in the same team. They were my receivers. I was the quarterback, and they were fantastic. Um, and then I tore my ACL, and I had to stop, and then I lost contact with them. And then I joined my first gym as a coach 12 years ago. I turn up. Adam and Tristan are part of that gym. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? And then I get into Warhammer, and they're both like, you into Warhammer? I was like, I am indeed. And they're like, so are we. Nice. Do you want to hang out again? I was like, yes, I do. So it's amazing how like they've always been a part of um of my life and uh yeah i'm very very appreciative of, of both of them um so yeah that, that's that's a that's another part of it that i really appreciate too no that's that that's an amazing and it, it's you have a very unique uh warhammer story too i, I really appreciate that because like i said I'm, I'm not trying to like discredit anybody that has the story but the whole like it was a kid it went away because of girls and then it came back like yours is a little bit more unique than that and i think it's because we're talking deeper everyone probably has it but you know, yeah the perspective the similar mindset like it's just everything about what you're doing with this with, with your life i really appreciate that it's become a part of my life on some way thank you oh no definitely De- i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna force it into your life <laughs> <laughs> thank you get away from me now yeah oh yeah you're, you're locked in you're locked in so yeah, don't, yeah, we're, don't we're worry stuck. <laughs> it's okay yeah. it's all right as my wife yeah. calls it stuck in the mud um hey stuck in the mud oh that's merch you need to do some merch that's a good shirt <laughs> yeah that's actually like it's fine like i can use i can use the horrendous surname that mudge is i remember it literally means men of the mud like well that's yeah my, i'm doing all right though you know i'm doing all right i'm not living my, in mud anymore so. my, my last name's Moore, <laughs> and my first name's charles so i'm like yeah my, charles means man and Moore means the moors <laughs> i'm a i'm a swamp, moors, yeah i'm a swamp man i don't know <laughs> anyway um, I I do want to know just to I don't want to keep you too long. I have enjoyed this chat. I'd like I would go another three hours if I could. Yeah, I was thinking the same. I was like, this is going to be so hard to keep this under like an hour. So yeah, but we'll we'll just have to do it again. Exactly. Let's come back. That'd be fine with me. Uh, yeah. so what is your next plans? I guess with the uh with with the Warhammer and things, whether it's YouTube, your army painting, tournaments. Like, what what's your next upcoming plan? Maybe say the next six months, people can keep an eye out for it. So the the main series of the channel is going to be the tourney journey, which mm-hmm. I, was, I was happy with that name. I was like, good name, perfect. That, that that works well, and it's basically going to be the story of me going from pretty much a complete beginner, especially on tenth is going to come out. Obviously, I have some prior knowledge from my attempts in the last six months, but it's going to be me going from being a beginner to then playing in tournaments. I'm not there to win, like I'm really not. I'm just there to have fun and you know just meet people and have fun that's that's all i'm there for so if people are keen to see that process and the things i learn and the battles i have and just just want to be along for the journey then then that's what that's going to be um the most recent thing i've got coming up i've got a games expo uh next week uh, in birmingham mm-hmm. uh, i was gutted i got invited to warhammer fest by games workshop because of steven steven box my friend oh, yeah, he, yeah. he missed, and i was in america and oh, i was that's like when you yeah <laughs> yeah and i was like <laughs> so i just missed out on that one and the people who went my friends who i played D with and and uh you know just they're both getting into warhammer now um they went along and they got sent some stuff by games workshop and i was like <laughs> and one of them was like barely even into warhammer and he keeps saying he's like i feel so bad because i'm like just getting into this and you've been doing this for 20 years and you and i was like mm-hmm, mm-hmm yeah i know i know if, if you if you need, I, I can happily use my connections to get you connect on some Dude, level. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will take anything. I will take anything you've got. This is like I, genuinely the dream come true to me. Yeah. Like I, that's the the most enjoyable part about this. I am, I'm doing what my. If I looked back and, and my childhood self got to see what I was doing, then my childhood self would be like, "That's cool." Yeah, like that's amazing. Like, that's yeah. that's all you really want to do. You want to you want to delight the inner child that you have and that everyone has in themselves. Um. So yeah, the plans for the channel, just keep growing, just keep making videos. 
just show up again just be consistent with it and yeah. if people want to join and just kind of feel like they're part of there's something quite nice about being the part of something when it starts and then seeing that process so if people want to join you know i would love to have them on board i'd love to have them as part of the you know part of the team from from the very beginning um but yeah i'm, I'm honestly i'm just having fun with it yeah that's my main focus no. i've got a couple of things i would like to achieve but they're really just just you know they're off in the distance i just want to have fun with this yeah and you'll achieve those by doing probably it, yeah, exactly just focus on the exactly. doing and and what i could suggest to uh, with part of your attorney journey um this mm -hmm. has helped me a lot recently because like i said I, I realized i wasn't competitive as i used to be so yeah. i was i was adjusting so the last tournament i went to well the last two so the one prior was called brew hammer and i took a competitive list and i lost every game but one like just Ooh. teeth kicked in. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the, the dice gods. Yeah, and it's like you know, I kept my chin up, did my best. You know, I got to play five new people. Great, great experience. But it was just like that mental burden of like, I'm not doing what I set out to do. Made me yes, go like, okay, yeah. well, is it, it, it? You know, okay, I wasn't able to prepare as well as I wanted to. And I looked at my life, my structure. And like, I don't have that capacity to prepare that way. So I need to shift my yeah. goal um to be to something else so the last one i went to which was uh, warpstone wars a local one my goal was to take slanesh and was to really understand that temptation mechanic based upon that age of sigmar army was i want to understand this mechanic and learn it to the point where i could play with my opponent with it because it's very player uh interaction yeah. dependent yeah. yeah and i did that and I still, I want the same record as my brew hammer, but I had a world of different experience. I loved every moment of it because I achieved my goal. So even if your goal is not to win, having a goal that will help you, you know, like, like I want to learn this part of the army or I want to, I want to, yeah, that's the best thing this, you can do. I'm writing this down. <laughs> um, that, yeah, that, like even, even the idea that, that, thank you for that. That's, that's actually really good piece of advice. Um, I'm just going to write that, go into tournaments. Into, yeah, no, uh, not a problem. And, uh, and yeah, it's uh, it it improved my it improved my experience as a tournament player, just between two events because of because of that shift in focus. I like that. Um, so even at the uh, this games expo, which will be my first ever Warhammer like expo, which I'm really excited for because I mm -hmm. I've been to fitness expos lots, and I went to one recently, and I was like. Cool, but I wish this was a Warhammer Fest. <laughs> yeah. And it was hosted in the exact same place as well, which was weird. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I was like, oh, there was a Terminator right here, and now it's just this guy on steroids who is probably not going to be around for much of his 40s. Um, <laughs> but oh. my, my goal with this, <laughs> my goal with this is when I'm over, going over to the um, expo, I'm going to give myself, like, a quest Yes. I'm going to give myself quests to achieve in the video. So instead of just like, here's me, some random guy walking around an expo, you know, I want to be like, right, my goal is to achieve this. I want to make Dave pledge his allegiance to corn, or I'm going to get, you know, Steven to flex a bicep, or I'm going to get Warhammer Girl to, I don't know, da dance or something. I don't know, anything. <laughs> that's that's kind of the plan that I want that's to take awesome. into this, you know, have fun and, and kind of almost make it like a video game. Like, there you, you know, go. See me in quests. Um, so yeah, just, even just that, the enjoyment of creating that in terms of the content rather than just being like, here's another video of someone walking around an expo that, you know, you don't really know. Right. Gets people invested and interested. So, um, well, I, I guess yeah. that then um, I'll put all these down below, but where can people find you on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you may be at and wherever you want to share? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give my actual my Warhammer channel a shout out. So it's more Warhammer on Instagram. It is more Warhammer on YouTube, and that's at the oh and on TikTok we actually we actually have a oh your TikTok okay yeah but our TikTok is actually yeah we're TikTok is again that's run by Mike yeah I'm not gonna take mm. any credit on that he runs that but it's um yeah again more Warhammer uh, and if you want to see my board that I built it's the it's the video that has two point three million views somehow <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. So you know, um, people people seem to be enjoying the board that I made. So yeah, nice. And if you want to find me, if you want for fitness stuff, obviously, um, at Ben Mudge underscore. I still can't get Ben Mudge because someone's been using that name for the last eight years and not posted anything. So I trust me. I know yeah. on, on Twitter there's someone called Strength Hammer. That's why I'm I'm Strength Hammer underscore, <laughs> and they don't post oh, yeah, anything. 
Yeah, just that little cheeky underscore. You're like, yeah, you don't want to go to one though. You don't want to go like strength or bear mudge one. one. You're like, yeah. ah, no. Keep my goal is eventually to be so big that hammer strength gym equipment reaches out and says, hey, can you change your name? <laughs> if, I yeah, reach, that's, if I reach that level, I'll be happy. <laughs> Dude, keep pushing this podcast. Just keep pushing this podcast. There it is. All right. Thank you for the conversation. We will have you back on again. Uh, everyone, make sure you go over to uh, more Warhammer. Subscribe, like, comment, follow along with the journey. And then also on the Instagram so you can see the uh, the fun. I'm going to do my best to follow you along at the UK Games Expo because I'll be working at the GW Warhammer Fe- or Warhammer Open. <laughs> <laughs> so well, it'll be a. I might be catching up after the fact, but um, uh, well, the video will come out. Mike's going to be editing that video, so it'll probably take about a week or so, oh, maybe perfect. longer to get out. So don't worry. But if just just as a fun thing, if if you've come from this podcast and you're going over to the YouTube channel, let me know. I would love to know if this is where you discovered the the you know, the Absolutely. YouTube channel from. Because yeah, to say what should we get them to say? Uh, Let's give them a, stay st- Stormcast strong. Yeah, use my, use my tag. There just, we go. Just say, I "Hey, like I'm Stormcast Strong, and I'm here for here for Ben." <laughs> Perfect. Appreciate right. it.